Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Brady discovers the truth about Kristen and Marlena and Maggie celebrate their anniversaries without their husbands Marlena opens an anniversary card from John that was sent with some lovely flowers on Friday's episode of Days of Our Lives. To Marlena's dismay, when the doorbell rings, it's Kristen. Kristen lets herself in to wait even though Brady isn't home. She mentions the flowers, and Marlena says that while it's her anniversary, John and his father are out of town. Days as Marlena welcomes Kristen, she grimaces in the doorway of John and Marlena's. When Kristen remarks that John missed the joyous occasion, Marlena smacks her hands away from the flowers. He will not miss it. Tonight, he will return home. After making a few more crude remarks, Kristen claims that she wanted to know whether Marlena enjoyed the cookie that Rachel had prepared for her. Belle answers the doorbell when it rings again. Belle greets Kristen with an embrace before they exchange jabs about their romantic life. Andrew arrives after another knock. Paul is back in San Francisco when Marlena wonders whether he is with him. Or not. On Shane's behalf, however, Andrew is present with a message regarding John. He has been invited to consult on a significant case in Washington, D.C. After Kristen interrupts, Marlena instructs her to stop talking and thanks Shane and Andrew. Instead of John, Andrew offers her a present from him. The phrase all my love, all my life is engraved on a bracelet charm. John. Paul is surprised to see Andrew when Johnny shows up with him, and vice versa. After they both explain their reasons for being here, Kristen becomes irate that she has been ignored and demands to know Brady's whereabouts. When wishing Marlena a happy anniversary. Without your husband, Kristen departs when Johnny informs her that he has to quit. After she leaves, Paul asks Andrew to marry him by getting down on one knee, removing a ring, and saying yes. Days while Kristen sits irritated in the background while Belle and Andrew smile behind her, Marlena joyfully examines her open gift package. In the square, Tate bumps into Holly. When he clumsily inquires about how things are doing, they both discover that their grandparents' wedding anniversaries coincide. She says, have fun, as he heads to the family baseball game. I feel awful, he says, stopping her. After telling him there is nothing more to say, Holly walks away. At the mansion, Sarah discovers her mother looking affectionately at Victor's photo and wishes her a happy anniversary. Then, to her mother's surprise, she gives Maggie a plush elephant. According to Sarah, the usual present for a tenth anniversary was ivory, thus an elephant Ah, Maggie replies hesitantly. Astute! She acknowledges that she was thinking about the anniversary from the previous year, feeling lost yet reassured by Constantine's phony gift. With her, Khan the Khan never stood a chance. He was always destined to fail, and she had two great marriages. And now she has Maggie's next major love, Victoria. With the help of a voice recording of Victoria, Sarah informs her mother that the elephant is from Victoria. Maggie will always remember Victor, even if she is unsure if elephants have a permanent memory. Although Sarah feels a little uncomfortable, she does not want Maggie to take her medication. She desires to be there today. Maggie explains to her daughter that Philip erred in preventing Xander from selling Titan. Victor would have concurred. Doug wishes Julie the best as she arrives with snacks. He's been depressed and battling a cold. The topic of conversation then shifts to all Chad has gone through, and Julie enjoys telling the ladies that the con artist was Constantine's granddaughter. If you think whatever she says is true. John, however, did not murder anyone. Sarah also notes that Victor killed Katharina without using the pawn. Maggie is able to release that guilt. Maggie is relieved that Victor was innocent, but they now know that Constantine killed him pointlessly. Holly enters, looking a little uncomfortable, and acknowledges that she bumped into Tate when Maggie prods her. He had already moved on from their conversation from the previous day. They're done permanently. Julie replies, oh, my dear, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Although Holly doesn't believe it, the others all admit that they have experienced the same thing, breaking up and then getting back together again, many times. Julie tells Holly how she met Maggie many years ago, 
and there was the turbulent connection between Xander and Sarah. After being scarred in a fire, she left Doug, but she went back to get it back, and two months ago, they celebrated their 49th anniversary. Her teenage boyfriend then absconded with her closest pal. She is aware of Holly's struggles. All of them have experienced heartbreak, but a broken heart has more room. Julie and Doug have endured a great deal to maintain their relationship, and Maggie experienced happiness twice with Mickey and Victor. Thus, don't say never. To commemorate John and Marlena's anniversary, Brady and Johnny are in the park getting ready for a family baseball game. After Johnny's major birthday outburst, Brady inquires about how things are going, but Johnny is reluctant to discuss it. They immediately begin discussing Tate, expressing amazement that he is already a senior and Brady's gratitude for spending time with him following the Fiona scandal. Tate and Brady Day's converse at the park. Paul arrives at that moment, and they start joking about how good each of them is at baseball. Brady points out that John and Marlena are in for more surprises than just Paul. Excited to meet Uncle Paul, Tate stops by. Tate was visiting Uncle Andrew when they last saw one another. But he's on an ISA assignment, so he's not there. However, Paul intends to pop the question when he returns home. After warming up, they inquire about Paul and Andrew's specifics. Although everyone is thrilled for him, Paul is a little bashful due to his failed marriage to Sonny. They all agree that John is a fantastic father and grandpa, and they discuss how wonderful it was for him to join Paul for pride. Brady says he will wish Maggie a happy anniversary as well as they drive home, but Tate tells him that he doesn't believe it's a good idea to see Holly because he picked Sophia instead. Julie and Doug go home after tea and donuts, while Holly goes to a friend's house. Maggie enjoyed her day. After telling Sarah that Kristen assured him the serum was almost ready, Brady stops by with a present for their anniversary and good wishes. Excellent, but that is meaningless because Xander is unable to turn Titan over. What? What are you discussing? Holly finds Tate remaining at the park in the last seconds of the concert and flees. Julie sighs and picks up a tray after glancing longingly at a picture of herself and Doug. Have created a fantastic family. Maggie is asked by Sarah if Brady made it out safely. She assumed he was aware of the serum drama, but he was clearly unaware. Sarah leaves to see how Victoria is doing after Maggie praises her for a great day. Maggie, by herself, sends Victor a happy anniversary greeting. When Brady arrives at the DeMera home, he appears irritated, while Kristen greets him blithely and joyfully. Tate was informed by him that she had given the serum to Sarah and Xander out of altruism, although this was clearly untrue. Following a moment of surprise, Andrew happily accepts Paul's proposal. When John calls Marlena to wish her a happy anniversary and to thank him for the present, the joy is cut short. Paul answers the phone and informs her of his engagement. Before Marlena ends the conversation, Belle speaks with her father and they both agree that they have wonderful children and grandchildren. We. Oui.